Okay, and welcome to part four of the beginning AutoCAD tutorial. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make isometrics. For those of you unfamiliar with what an isometric is, it's usually a slightly complex shape. It doesn't actually have to be complex, but it's a shape where you're able to see the front, the side, so let me draw in an arrow, the side, as well as the top of an object. And when you're able to see all this information, you're usually able to reproduce the shape. Now this is actually what AutoCAD is oftentimes used for um, because it's really good at drawing isometric shapes. And I'm going to show you how. So when we start an isometric, we want to make sure that we are in the isometric view, aka we're seeing the front, the side, and the top of the shape. Um, and when you start a new project, oftentimes it isn't quite like that. We're going to be looking at the top of the view cube, and that's only one of the sides we wanted to see. So what we're going to do right now is I'm going to click down once. So now I'm looking at the front, and then I'm going to click at this corner over here. And if you notice, now we're looking at the top, the front, and the side of this shape. So now we can go ahead and draw in what we want to draw. We also want to make sure that we have our snapping tool enabled. So our snapping tool is ortho mode and it's located down here. I'm going to click on that and now we're ready to go ahead and start drawing in this shape. So taking a look at the isometric, first thing you're going to notice is that the base is 96 by 64 and it's extruded 16 units upwards, so 96 by 64. So let's go ahead and draw in a rectangle that is 96 by 64. And we're going to do this probably twice, but let me activate the rectangle tool by typing in REC. And first I'm going to specify a corner point, so I'm going to click here. And then I'm going to type in D for dimensions, enter, and I'm able to specify the length of this rectangle. So I'm going to type in 96, enter, and then 64, enter. And if I zoom out, oh, that actually turned out pretty nicely. Um, you're going to notice that we have, it's weird, um, well, you're going to notice that we have our rectangle. And I'm holding one of the corners right now and I'm able to click it into place. So I'm going to click it down here and now it's locked into place. Now you might remember from the first two videos um, that if we wanted to extrude an object like this we would use the extrude command EXT and we can click on the object enter and extrude it out you know 16 units. And while that is you know, usually the tool we do use I'm going to introduce a new tool called the Press Pull Tool. And to activate the Press Pull Tool, you type in P-R-E-S-S, -S, and you're going to have Press Pull, and you're going to press Enter. And this tool works very similar to Extrude, except that it, can, it knows when to extrude, and it knows when to subtract. So it's like Extrude and Subtract in one. So I'm going to click on this shape over here, and I'm going to type in 16 to specify the extrusion length. And boom, there you have it. We have the base of our isometric shape. So the next thing we're going to want to draw is this over here. You know, where it's like a line that goes out 20 units, followed by a cir half circle, and followed by another line that is roughly 20 units, or exactly 20 units. So let's go ahead and draw that. I'm going to want to make sure that all my snapping tools are enabled, so I'm going to go over to my object snap settings and because of my last video they are all enabled but if they're not for you click select all and then click OK. So let's use the line tool line enter and I'm gonna start at this corner over here I'm gonna click here and I'm gonna move up and according to the image it is 16 units up so I'm gonna type in 16 enter then I'm gonna move straight out 20 units 20, enter. Then I'm going to go this way, right, 16 units, enter. And I'm going to go down 
20 units. So click right there and that is this box over here 16, 16, 20 um, as well as there's a circle on the end over there. So let's go ahead and add that circle. I'm going to type circle, enter. I'm going to click at the midpoint and specify that this circle has a radius of 8, enter. And now that circle is in place with the rest of the shape. Now we don't need all this part, so let's go ahead and remove a few things. First I'm going to use the trim command, so T-R-I-M, trim, enter, and I'm going to click on this circle, this line, and even these lines here. And first you have to select the lines of there being a line you want to remove. So I selected all those. I'm going to press enter, and I'm going to subtract or trim off this line. So click on that, and I'm going to press enter, and you're going to notice that I can't the trim off that line, but if you use the delete key on your keyboard, you should be able to delete it. So now that line is gone, and all we're left with, with is this shape. So if we try to subtract this now, it wouldn't quite work the way we wanted it to. Case in point, um, let me show you. Um, if I pressed extrude, and I clicked on the components of this shape, let's say those three, and pressed enter and moved it up like this and then went over to my shaded mode. You're going to notice, just like with the home, it doesn't actually extrude out the shape. It's only extruding out the sides, kind of like a wrapper. Um, but if we want to cut something, just like in this isometric where it's cut in there, we're going to want to remove that. So I'm going to go ahead and undo this, control Z, or I can press the undo button up here. Um, back to this, and that is why we use press pull. So I'm going to type in press, enter, and you can notice right away when I hover over this shape, it selects it. Press over there, and I'm going to drag it all the way to the bottom, click there, and it's been cut out. So if I go over to my shaded mode, you're going to notice that it has been successfully cut out with the press pull tool and it was much much easier to to work with. So next let's go ahead and draw out this triangle section over here. It is 12 units by 40 plus 16 so that's 56 so 12 units by 40 units by 28 units 12 by 40 by 28. Okay, so let's go ahead and draw that. Jump back into 2D wireframe mode as such. And I'm going to type in line, enter. I'm going to click on a corner over here. And I'm going to roll up 40 units, enter. Then I'm going to go up. I believe it said 28 units, let me double check that, 28, so I'm going to go up 28 units, and then I'm going to roll over to this corner over here, to my endpoint, and I'm going to click over there, just like so, and this is extruded out 12 units, so let's go ahead and use the press pull tool, P-R-E-S-S, -S. and you're going to notice right away that this isn't exactly reacting like this last one did. I can't seem to select the entire triangle, I can only seem to select a side of it, and I don't want a hollow shape, so let's use the join command, join, whoops, um, just like the word, join, enter, and what we're going to do is we're going to click on the three lines that make up the triangle, press enter, and what this does is it turns individual lines into polylines. So now these are all part of the same object. I'm going to go ahead now and use the press pull tool. And now I can select this entire thing and I'm going to move it outward 12 units. So in my shaded mode you should have the following. It's looking pretty good. Let's hop back to 2D. Next part we're going to make 
is this box thing over here. It's a little tricky. Um, the, I'm feeling that we're going to make it into a box first and then we're going to go ahead and make this cut over here. And we're going to do that in the next video because this one's about 10 minutes or so. So I will see you in part five.